Now, ladies and gentlemen, um, before we move on to the next topic, I quickly like to request everyone that once we are done with the session and we take a break, of course, you will be attending and visiting the exhibition behind. So right now, that time you can also connect with all our speakers present here and also be at the meeting room for more better connections, right? So with that, I think now that the secret sauce of Refill Sales is out, it's time for the next very interesting topic. So digitization is definitely the best thing that has happened to mankind. So from paperwork to platform, how digital innovation fuels growth in real estate. And on this topic, to talk, we have Mr. Ketan Sabnis, co-founder and CEO, Cell.2. So everybody, let's give him a huge round of applause as we welcome our second speaker of the day on stage, Mr. Ketan Sabnis. Uh, thank you for this opportunity, and I think uh, better now. Is it? Audible now. Just a second, I think. Better. Okay. Audible now? Yeah. yeah. So thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. I think Akhil set the context very well for us uh, of how, what referral sales could do and what you actually look at by digitizing the entire thing. And I think I can continue on that. So we are going to talk about how to move from paper to platform. I think a lot of uh, you must have already started on that journey. Uh, so I would like to present like the full piece of what, what's possible, discuss some case studies, discuss around what, what's happening across India, what we have been doing with uh, some of our customers. And let's see uh, how you can digitize and how it uh, fuels your growth, how it uh, ensures you can drive better efficiency and drive sales. Yeah. Okay, so just... Uh, Something about Cell.2, so we have been uh, in the industry from 2011. We are backed by Aurum PropTech. It's a public uh, company. It's a PropTech fund. Uh, so that way, it's an, uh, what we have done over 10 to 12 years now is that we have created an integ integrated platform uh, right from tracking your advertising to uh, pre-sales to sales to after sales, post-sales, uh, and up to a position journey. Uh, we can actually ensure that the entire tech is digitized, it's all on one platform, and you can seamlessly connect all data points and uh, drive efficiency out of it. Uh, so what do we believe at Cell.2? I think uh, when we started, our mission was always to uh, make home buying easy for everyone. Like, so uh, there are different stakeholders. You've got home buyers, you've got developers, of course, people like you, and you've got channel partners. So we thought uh, the best way is to kind of build tech for everyone, especially for developers, uh, and get them to be empowered to use maximum uh, data uh, data points that they're collecting and drive efficiency and to serve their customers better. So our focus is always to uh, either help you drive efficiency, uh, get faster sales, and to improve your customer experience. Yeah. So I think I don't need to emphasize more on this. There's a need for digital transformation. Uh, uh, the real estate sector is growing. It's about to reach one trillion. So uh, what are the key reasons why you would sh you should look at digital transformation, right? So. Uh, one, I think it has always been a buyer's market now for, I think, the last six, seven years, and it's going to continue that it's going to be a buyer's market. So uh, having a strong brand uh, really matters. It's going to help you drive value. It's going to help you build trust and kind of bring resale. I think what Akhil was talking for referrals. Again, brand is really important, and digital transformation or digital digitizing, that really helps you. Uh, second, of course, everybody's focused on building a quality product. Uh, and the third is the buyer experience. So how do you give them a good experience right from the, uh, from the first touch point to sales and then after sales? So the entire journey, uh, how are you engaging with them? How are you keeping them engaged? How, where and how you're communicating with them? All of that needs to be standardized, needs to be digitized, and needs to be uh, more streamlined. And the experience can be really enhanced with what, what's possible today. Uh, I think the time is to act now. So not going to deal a lot into this. I think everybody believes that. So I've just put a blueprint. I think it looks really big, but uh, that's the scope of digital transformation that you should look at. Uh, what I would like to cover today is more towards the customer experience. So whenever there's a touch point with a customer, uh, that part of the digitization is something that we are going to focus on. Uh, so just a high-level overview. I'm not sure if it's visible at the back, but 
Uh, and we'll cover this again. You can meet us at a stall. We have it uh, out there, so we can talk more about this. But an overview of it is, I think you should start looking at uh, data and data ingestion pipeline as the starting point. Uh, I think everybody, every business has a lot of data, whether it's customer, demographic, advertising data. Uh, you have so many channels through which people are communicating. WhatsApp is really growing big. So there's a lot of uh, data from and many channels through which you're collecting data. So how do you digitize that, get all of that put into a single platform? Uh, of course, you've got a lot of offline data also. So you have got resident data. A lot of people have resident apps. Uh, connecting all of their data, and we have some case studies on how that also helps you really drive sales better. So getting that, and then creating a single customer view out of it. Uh, that's the first objective, I think, when you're looking at or evaluating any uh, transformation platform or a digital platform. I think you should look at that. How, many, how easy is it to ingest data? How easy is it to drive insights? And how easy is it to build a single customer view out of it? Uh, and then it's all about transforming your team and process around it, right? So it's going to take a longer time. Uh, you need to be really focused and give all your teams all the tools that they need so that they don't need to go back to paper, they don't need to go back to Excel, right? So ensuring that all your teams, right from your marketing where it's around ROI calculation, a full funnel view so that they don't need to, it's, we have always seen this that it's very tough to uh, look at data through the entire funnel while marketing is looking at say quality of leads or your CAC and stuff. People are not looking really what's happening on the site. Uh, why is your booking getting delayed? So a full funnel view on the entire thing is really important when you're looking at sales and marketing. Uh, similarly for pre-sales, uh, now with AI, you can do a lot of things around pre-sales. You have got bulk dialers. You've got AI-driven uh, SDRs that can bring a lot of uh, data into it. Audits can be run online directly. So you can do a transcript. Uh, and multilingual is very, very easy to do now. You can do Hindi, English. You can do all kinds of languages. Uh, get a transcript out of it. Uh, get the AI to throw out of uh, throw scores to you, so it can analyze right from uh, what competitors were mentioned, whether budget was discussed, what was the USP that probably will appeal to the customer. Is he looking at the location or that appeal to him, the budget appeal to him, what really appeals to the customer, uh, and also it becomes like an auditing tool for your pre-sales guys, whether they are really following the script, are they looking at the right, uh, are they mentioning and are they following the script, are they talking the right points and appealing to customers. Right? Of course, in sales, then negotiation, cost sheets, all of that, I've not seen this getting adopted very fast, but I think this is one thing that people need to concentrate on, of how you can digitize the entire purchase experience. So when someone comes to the site, how can you entirely change that experience on your site? How do you manage, ensure that you give them a concierge service? How do you ensure that there are wait times are monitored, uh, the right information is sent to them, and when they come to the desk for negotiations, how can you make it very easy and transparent? Uh, I think today everybody expects transparency from a customer point. Everybody expects that it's going to be really transparent. It's going to be quick. So uh, hiding inventory behind something, you can still do a lot of gamification around it. I know, I think for real estate, everybody understands that nobody wants to open up their entire inventory, right, on day one. You don't want to show how much is sold, how much is not sold, what's the exact price, what was the last unit that was sold, uh, and at what price. So I think using technology, you can still showcase transparency, but have a lot of algorithms and your control at the back so that what you want or what, how you want to present it comes across. But for the customer, it comes across as very clear transparency. So I'm getting a view of the inventory. I can generate a cost sheet. I can view it uh, right up front there. Uh, you can put in your VRAR tools. You can do shoots, drone shoots. All of that can be available right. Whether the customer wants to view it, uh, we have done extensions of this where channel partners can also access this. So then it becomes like an extended sales arm for you. Uh, at a lot of places, we have a case study of uh, a client in Maharashtra where we, it's based in Pune but they wanted to sell across the state. And then how do you get channel partners to engage across this? Or if you're getting your sales teams to do uh, tours and then try to sell in different cities, how do you digitize that experience? How all of this comes in together uh, when you bring it on one platform. Of course, CRM, I think uh, Akhil spoke about it, of from position after collecting 10%, how important it is to ensure that you're con continuously engaged with the customer and really build that brand loyalty. So how do you communicate about site progress? How do you get them to know about what demand is it? How do you also empower your, your team to ensure that follow-up is done on time? So right time reminders, getting them some of it can completely move to WhatsApp. So you can have WhatsApp bots. You can get a handover to your CRM teams. So all of that comes under your CRM piece. Uh, I think uh, on the other end, then you've got two other stakeholders, right? You've got your customers and you've got a channel partner. So how do you get them also onto a single platform? Uh, you can completely digitize the experience for them, and we'll cover that more in the case study. 
and then in the between in between it sits with your ai and it sits with your process automation so your entire task productivity suite needs to be built into the product i think most of you guys have already adopted this so everybody has a lead management system a crm where you can digitize that entire experience so i think that is pretty much sorted for everyone okay and we'll talk about how the customer portal can extend into uh, ekyc aadhar uh, you can look into uh, loan books you can look at uh, getting a credit score and developing a lead score or basis that a lot of stuff that can help you get a booking faster and from booking to agreement where loan is really a critical point uh, getting that eligibility done is something that you can again digitize so all of these tools once made available to your sales guys will really help them empower them to give a better experience and do a faster sale as well so i think this is the main part that i want to cover more on case studies and more on discussions on what we have been doing so i think the first case study i wanted to pick up was mahindra uh, we've been talking about this so i think some of you might know about it but this is one thing that uh, really makes us proud like working with mahindra it was done during covid time a very very accelerated digital transformation and digital innovation that we could do with them uh, so just to give a, a like an idea of what we were trying to do uh, this is uh, mahindra happiness doing a launch in mumbai uh, during covid so this is 2020 september october after the lockdown we just opened up right uh, there there was almost like a lull of 6 7 months when there was no launches happening sales teams were just sitting uh, buyers were really uh, there was no in, people really wanted to invest a, into a home because now everything was remote everything was working from home so people knew that you need a home to be secure especially like a city in bombay people thinking from a rental were thinking about buying a home but there was no new launch everybody was apprehensive of how do i do a launch how do i get people to visit a site because it's going to have crowds people are going to not really be uh, intending to visit a site right so how do you digitize that entire experience and that was the problem statement with which mahindra came to us uh, that we want to do this launch uh, we have got a couple of months uh, how do you digitize that entire experience and we want to do a online only digital launch and it's it doesn't need to be just or we don't want to restrict only to collecting an eoi just to get enquiries we want to do an actual booking we also want our channel partners to be really empowered to do this because we don't have sales teams and we don't have it's a small team we don't really want uh, we can't give a site experience so i think with channel partners we really want to extend this and ensure that the entire experience can be given to customers so i think home buyers i think that is what we have covered so uh, home buyers really there was a barrier to engagement sales guys were really sitting they didn't have any tools and channel partners were really they are always on the site like right? for them it's getting the customer to the site getting to the sales guy and doing that experience on the site so for them their entire playground is on the project site for them they never knew how could we digitize or what could we do and nobody was going to invest in their own tools that fast so my with mahindra we wanted to create a platform that could equip all the channel partners to really extend that crm whether they wanted to uh, talk to leads whether they wanted to do calling whether they wanted to do a scheduling with your sales guys also yeah so how do we do that so a quick journey on what we have been what we could do so we started with marketing of course uh, everybody does this you get to digital as the primary channel you generate leads the first change that we thought we had to do here is generally people look at generating an enquiry on your website and then everything is taken off by the pre sales guys they will call you will whatsapp you will sms and you will get them to the site that's the first change so we made it into a complete ecom experience so once you registered the customers were now getting uh, like an otp and a login uh, they could log in with their phone and the entire sales collateral at the starting point of what you want to do in a pre launch was available for them with a lot of gamification around it of talking about what are the usps about the project what's it's coming soon and a lot of engagement in the first 5 days 5 to 7 days when you're really doing a massive campaign once you have an enquiry from that till the eoi was going to opened up uh, we had a lot of communication happen over whatsapp really exciting videos uh, stuff being shared and engaging uh, with the customers so all of that digitized right again uh, one more thing that we could do with this is once that ecom platform was live we could really understand how deep into the customer buying journey one was getting into so some people were probably just registering never really logged in the second class was probably a people who had logged in and were uh, just browsing some content really intended to understand the project we could also once the eoi phase opened up the segmenting module kind of helped us to look at how many people had really gone deeper into it to pay an eoi how many of them were really intended to look at what kind of inventory or which uh, unit or which configuration they were really keen about in uh, buying into similarly with channel partners also we could understand who were really just adding leads for the heck of adding leads versus some who were really adding leads then talking to them adding notes on that 
uh, also trying to schedule meetings. So we had connected calendars from all sales guys. All that Outlook was connected, so it became like a public calendar where channel partners could look and directly book a Zoom call. Zoom was, of course, integrated again. So now it becomes like a ch channel partner doesn't need to think before scheduling a site visit. He can add a lead. He can see who is my internal sourcing manager or who is my sales manager at the back end. Really see his ca calendar availability, book a Zoom call, and get the, sale, uh, get the customer, the sales guy, all on one platform. Right? So this all was initially uh, designed out there. Uh, that kind of helped us drive all the virtual site visits. So uh, once, once the first visit, of course, there was a long SOP written around it, which was uh, drilled down to the sales guys of how you approach this uh, over different phases. So in the first call, what needs to be presented? In the second call, what needs to be presented? Uh, all of that was, again, digitized. So between the first call, second call, we had AR tours, VR tours that were built out. Then we had drone shoots and done everything. So how do you, uh, what communication and what uh, content needs to be shared at what point? Again, that SOPs were defined with them. Uh, the entire booking experience, uh, again, then got digitized. So we looked at, uh, because everything had to move online, we were looking at how do we digitize the KYC. So uh, uh, you've got DocuSign, you've got Zoho Sign, and uh, digital signatures now available. So how do you get that is something that we figured out. Uh, people could just upload document, uh, self-attestation, the booking forms, all of that got uh, digitally generated, sent on their email, sent on their WhatsApp. Uh, they could sign on it, collect that back. And all of this documentation was partially done on behalf of the developer by channel partner. So they were really aiding all of this uh, cycle and uh, accelerating the sales uh, funnel for us. Again, once the EOI phase happened, uh, from there to booking, uh, we had a lot of gamification in that. So uh, what we were seeing is people, or what we have been seeing is uh, from EOI to uh, booking, there's a lot of cancellation. So people just put in a EOI amount. Uh, and especially when you're looking at a complete online sales, it becomes difficult to think about uh, how do you keep them engaged? How do you not want them to jump to the next project and, and cancel a EOI here? Right? So we had a good algorithm or a function of how many EOIs we were collecting and how early you got into that journey. And we were, the discount that they were going to get on the rate or on the agreement value was going to switch uh, accordingly. So they were continuously getting messages as, as we were collecting more EOIs. The, the people who really booked or collected an EOI or booked an EOI at the start, saw their discount amount really grow over a period of time. So within that 10-day period, someone who was seeing a lack of discount because of the number of EOIs that Mahindra could collect, that 1 lakh could become a 2 lakh. So they were also getting into a journey of sending referrals. Channel partners also got an uh, entire hang of it. I can get more people to get an EOI because then it's going to get more uh, discounts to my earlier customers who were really intended to get into a booking thing. So that entire experience, and then of course we opened up the inventory. Uh, that was all digitized. I think most of you do that. So digitizing that, uh, looking at cost sheets and everything was then digitized. And then booking experience was all uh, online. We could get around 10% on all of these 300 bookings in three weeks. So this is not EOIs. We had around 550, 600 EOIs that we had collected. Uh, and just digitally, 60% of them we could convert. So 300 plus bookings with 5 to 10% collected, all collected online. Uh, and so that's, that's a zero-touch project launch that we could do with uh, Mahindra. Uh, second, I think I wanted to cover something around uh, customer experience. So now we have seen how you can digitize the entire launch, uh, how you take it through an e-com route, how do you en uh, encourage or empower your channel partners, right? Uh, the second piece that I wanted to kind of cover today was around, uh, around how do you improve the entire customer experience for someone, and this is in the offline world. So you're still using digital but you are uh, changing the entire experience on the project side. Uh, so Aminora is a Pune-based client. Uh, it's a township, uh, very strong brand. And I think from the founders, it's, it's always been that way, that they have always wanted to focus on building that brand. Uh, probably the only developer that I know in Pune, especially, that doesn't work with channel partners at all. So from day one, they've always been focused that we want to build a brand, we want to build a loyalty. So for them, that, uh, uh, the problem statement from them was, how do we improve this further? How do we get more referrals? How do we get our channel part? How do we get our uh, customers or existing customers to become referral partners with us? Uh, plus, how do we improve the entire experience? We get people. We have a great township to talk about. But how do we digitize that? How do we ensure that they get a real uh, good experience? What they would get probably in a restaurant or what they will get into a five-star hotel when they check in. So, how do we make that experience? Along with that, how do we drive velocity when you are doing a launch? So what do we do here, right? So I think the starting point here was uh, we started looking at data to look at really can how, how much of referral are we getting initially, right? We connected there. Uh, so they have a resident app. 
So we could connect the resident app. The, they're already on the CRM, so we could look at all the historical referral data that we were getting, all the sources through which we were getting bookings. Basis that, I think we were understanding that we could bump up from a 7% that we, they were getting as referral back then from existing customers. We could take this to a 20% during a launch. And that was the target that we had set. Uh, that from launch, from existing residents, because it's a township, there are a lot of people who are also on rental, who also, because they experience the township, would want to buy. That was some insights that would get drive from the data. Uh, basis that, our initial marketing campaigns and everything that they planned from the data that we could share from the CRM was all around, all, also including then, uh, included that uh, township uh, residents and rentals and how could we uh, extend that entire campaign to them. Right? Then comes the site experience. So on the site, what we wanted to do with them was completely digitize that experience and give them a monitoring and a site management tool. So what happens generally is people walk in. On a launch day, you have like 300, 200 people walk in, and you really don't know what's happening, what are the wait times, uh, what person is doing what. Uh, it's very difficult to manage all of that. So we put an SOP around it. We had uh, a GRE, of course. We had a team captain who was going to coordinate and look at all the data and continuously monitor this. And then, of course, we had the sales uh, team uh, who was going to do the negotiation. Uh, we could digitize. So I think everybody's experienced a, a passport office now. You've got like three counters. You know what happens at every counter. And they're continuously monitoring your wait times and everything. So we kind of digitized that in the real estate space. Uh, and I, I think everybody has that SOP. You have a, a AV tour that you show. You show them the site. You show them the sample flat. You show them the sample uh, layout on uh, in your uh, sales experience, right? So that is something that you want to look at. You want to understand whether all of that is being covered and then look at uh, how to digitize all of that. So that was something that we were looking at. Uh, what we could do with this is ensure that uh, the wait times were continuously monitored and we could tell within a 10 minute, we could, uh, if someone had a time more than 10 minutes, we could really escalate that to the team captain and get him to uh, drive. Also the kind of uh, concierge service or the experience from a cafe or something that you would experience, all of that also was ensured they were getting notification of who's walking in. Uh, you had QR codes to scan so that people who had booked an appointment could quickly get into and had could skip the queue and stuff like that, right? Again, seamless bookings, uh, what I was talking, we could do across Maharashtra. We, we could, uh, sales teams could walk, channel partners could walk, all of that was available, the collateral was available to them on the platform and they could take bookings, they could collect payments and everything on the platform itself. Uh, I think on accelerated uh, registration, I'll quickly cover, I'm out of time. So uh, on that, we could integrate uh, one Bajaj Finance. So we could get a credit score. We could get an approximate loan amount that could be approved for a lot of people, especially when they were looking at uh, across Maharashtra. Uh, that helped them really understand what's the lead score and drive faster acceleration. So that, along with Aadhaar-based authentication and Aadhaar-based uh, OTP, uh, you, you can digitize your documents through that. So a lot of collection of documentation and all of that. We also integrated boards also collecting documents and you, could, you didn't need to go physically get them to visit the site to submit documents for loans. So the entire FinTech also was kind of pieced into the uh, sales experience. So I'll quickly get into this, some numbers. So I think the 46% drop-off is really important, uh, improvement on that. Yeah, that's, that's all from my end. I hope uh, we could talk about some good case studies. Happy to talk more about we are waiting outside. Thank you. Thank you once again, Mr. Keith and Subnis.